Let's move on. In the previous lecture, I have answered uh, the question why RSA is not used in HTTPS for data encryption. And now you know that uh, actually in HTTPS, symmetric encryption is used for data transfer. And uh, somehow we need to create a key that will be used for data encryption. And that key must be owned only by web browser and web server. So nobody else could uh, be able to get that key and uh, decrypt or encrypt uh, data that is transferred between me and web server. Let me explain you how TLS session is established using this diagram. So let's suppose that the web browser connects to web server via HTTPS. And uh, when TCP session is established, we start establishing TLS session. And first, what web browser does is that it sends to web server list of supported uh, Kipher suites. And web server chooses one of uh, Kipher suites from this list. And this step is called negotiation of Kipher suite. But what is Kipher suite? Kipher suite is a set of uh, protocols that uh, will be used uh, in further TLS communication. For example, each Kipher suite uh, specifies how symmetric key for data encryption will be generated. Also, each Kipher suite specifies which algorithm will be used for actual data encryption and decryption. And as we have discussed before, it is symmetric key encryption algorithm. So RSA is not used for encryption of actual data between web browser and web server for several reasons. Also, Kipker suite includes information about hashing protocol. It is usually SHA algorithm, but the length of its hash may be different in different Kipker suites. Okay, so Kipker suite is negotiated, and after that, web server sends its certificate to web browser. Please also remember that uh, if there are intermediate certification authority servers, web server sends their certificates as well. So it sends entire chain, usually excluding root uh, certification authority certificate, because it is assumed that uh, root certificates are located at the web browser site in the root certificates store. Okay, when web browser receives certificate from web server, it verifies that certificate. And we have discussed how that occurs. So we verify signature in certificate, we verify validity period, and also there is an optional check verification of certificate according to certificate revocation list. We will talk about that later on in the course. Okay, let's assume that the web browser has successfully verified the certificate uh, and entire certificate chain of web server, and uh, we can move on to next steps. After that, we start generation of symmetric key for data encryption. And that's where things may be different for different Kipher suites. In some cases, symmetric key will be generated on web browser side and sent to web server, encrypted of course, encrypted by public key of web server. Another way of generation of symmetric key is by utilizing Diffie-Hellman key exchange algorithm. And in that case, we don't encrypt the communication because Diffie-Hellman key exchange algorithm is designed for generation of same key on both sides via an encrypted public connection. And when both sides possess same encryption key, we can start sending and receiving actual data from web server to web browser and back. That's how TLS session is set up. In the next lecture, let's uh, look at it in practice and uh, let's analyze TLS session setup using Wireshark. We have actually uh, used it before and uh, let's use it again and explore TLS session setup. So see you in the next lecture. Bye-bye.